NASA, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, is a United States government agency responsible for the country's civilian space program and for aeronautics and aerospace research. NASA was established in 1958 as a response to the Soviet Union's launch of the first artificial satellite, Sputnik. Since then, NASA has been at the forefront of space exploration, developing new technologies, conducting groundbreaking research, and launching missions to explore our solar system and beyond. One of the most important centers of NASA is the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, JPL, located in Pasadena, California. JPL is responsible for the design, development, and operation of unmanned spacecraft for scientific research and exploration. The lab has played a key role in many of NASA's most significant space missions, including the Mars rover missions, the Voyager missions, and the Galileo mission to Jupiter. What is little known about the JPL is the unlikely, interesting story of how it began in the 1930s. When Robert Goddard, a pioneer of rocketry, claimed in 1920 that a rocket would one day land men on the moon, he was almost universally mocked by the press. With the New York Times famously saying that a rocket could not work in the vacuum of space because it had nothing to react to. To most people, Goddard's claim seemed like nothing more than science fiction of the day. After all, the first human flight was only 17 years earlier. However, to Frank Molina, Jack Parsons, and Ed Foreman, the field of rocketry was just beginning and there was unlimited potential for advancement. This group of unlikely people would meet at Caltech in 1936 under the supervision of respected aerodynamicist Theodore von Kármán. Frank Molina was considered the most academically inclined of the group. Molina was a graduate student having earned his mechanical engineering degree from Texas A&M in 1934. Jack Parsons, perhaps the most controversial but interesting of the group, was a recent dropout from Stanford University as his previously wealthy family had fallen on hard times during the Great Depression. Parsons was a gifted child, inspired by science fiction, who could often be found performing rocket experiments in the backyard of his Los Angeles home as a child. Withdrawing from Stanford did not deter Parsons as he would find himself at Caltech ready to continue his experiments. Parsons would prove to be a vital part of the early days of rocketry, however his life and contributions would ultimately be overshadowed by his perceived moral deviancy and association with occult figures such as Alistair Crowley and the Ordo Templi Orientis. Ed Foreman had a similar upbringing to Jack Parsons. He developed a love of science fiction and space travel from a young age and had experience working with Parsons on his early experiments. Under Carmen's supervision, Jack Parsons' knowledge of chemistry, combined with Ed Foreman's skill at machinery and Frank Molina's engineering knowledge would allow the group to advance rocket science and ultimately lay the foundation for the Jet Propulsion Laboratory and eventually NASA. Frank Molina, would originally face pushback from his superiors when he proposed doing his doctorate research on rocket propulsion and flight. Clark Millikan, a distinguished professor of aeronautics from Caltech, would try to persuade Molina to stick to the already bustling field of aviation. Molina would politely decline, and Millikan would later support his rocket research. This pushback would force Molina to do his initial research under the supervision of Theodore von Kármán. Kármán was a respected aerodynamicist, who had shown a previous interest in rocketry. He was specifically interested in surpassing the limitations of aircraft speed that came from traditional engine-propeller combinations. Kármán hoped rockets could solve this problem. Perhaps most surprising of all is that Kármán allowed Jack Parsons and Ed Foreman on Molina's research team. Molina would comment in his memoirs that their original research was self-funded by the group, they received no pay, and they did most of their work on weekends and nights. Molina comments that their original rocket motor, built in 1936 was similar in design to one previously produced by the American Rocket Society. For propellants they used gaseous oxygen and methyl alcohol, an unorthodox fuel combination for the time. This initial experiment was successful in finding new fuel formulations. It was completed multiple times between 1936 and early 1937. Molina would go on to write a technical paper about this project. In the fall of 1936, Molina would actually meet Robert Goddard. Molina found Goddard to be pleasant and generous in showing him his research facility and work, however he noticed Goddard was very wary of the press and other rocket researchers. According to Molina, Goddard showed him a clipping from the earlier New York Times article, which claimed rockets could never go to space. Goddard, at the time, was also not keen to publish his work in scientific journals and share his results. Instead he preferred to pursue patents for his work. Goddard would actually offer Molina a job at his lab for when he was done with his graduate studies. However, Molina would decline as he would soon receive substantial financial support from the US Army, and he was more interested in establishing the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. 1937 and 8 were marked by stagnation in Molina and Carmen's research, with nothing significant being accomplished. 
Carmen and Goddard had reached out to each other many times over this period to try and work together. However Goddard was seen as too secretive and uncollaborative to get any real work done with him. Carmen would eventually write that Goddard was an inventive man with a good scientific foundation, but he was on a branch of rocketry that died. Molina would also write that he was disappointed in not being able to work with Goddard on these early Caltech experiments as they could have accomplished much together. One notable incident from this period is a botched experiment which earned the group the name Suicide Squad. The group mounted a motor and propellant supply from a pendulum in order to measure thrust. The pendulum was mounted from the third floor of their lab building and the motor and propellant were hanging in the basement. Molina used methyl alcohol and nitrogen tetroxide for fuel. When the experiment began there was a misfire which resulted in a toxic cloud of nitrogen tetroxide and methyl alcohol permeating the basement of their lab. This left a layer of superficial rust on all of the permanent equipment in the lab. This incident resulted in the group being forced to conduct all future experiments outside of Caltech's campus. Not all was lost, as Jack Parsons would use the limited results to create new oxidizers. This incident would foreshadow Parsons' tragic 1952 death where he would accidentally cause a deadly explosion in his New Mexico laboratory. In August, 1938 the group was approached by Reuben Fleet, president of the Consolidated Aircraft Company in San Diego. Fleet was looking into the possibility of rocket motors assisting in the takeoff of large airplanes. The Army also approached the group in October 1938, originally telling them that the Army had little use for the rocket technology they were developing. However, in December 1938, the Army had a change of heart and two years after the initial experiments the group was granted $10,000 a little over $200,000 in 2023 to develop rocket technology for the U.S. Army. This was the beginning of the commercialization of rocketry and showed that the technology had serious use cases outside of the laboratory. The group would use this grant from the Army to create a crude but working version of a rocket-powered plane that had rocket motors attached to its wings, the idea being that the planes could take off from shorter runways due to the increased speed. This resulted in the first successful jet-assisted takeoff of a small airplane in August 1941 and a heavy bomber in 1942. World War II brought with it many new technological advancements. The most important in regards to future space travel was the German V-2 rocket. Used to distill fear by targeting Allied cities late in the war, the V-2 was a technological marvel at the time, however it was not produced in sufficient numbers to turn around a rapidly approaching defeat by the Allies. In 1943 the V-2 program was discovered by Allied intelligence and Kármán, already deeply involved with the military-industrial complex, would be asked by army officials to provide a technical analysis of the V-2 rocket. Kármán and his team intended to analyze, duplicate and hopefully improve on the V-2 rocket. This 1943 proposal would be the first time Kármán and his team would refer to themselves as the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. There would be significant developments in American rocket capability before the war, but true groundbreaking progress would not come until Operation Paperclip after the war. In late 1944 the JPL moved its testing grounds further away to the Mojave Desert near Leech Spring. By this time, the once small team had transformed into a group of a few hundred scientists and engineers of all types. Building on their desire to match the German V-2 program the JPL would create their first missile named Private, after the U.S. Army rank. Between December 1944 and April 1945 there would be 41 total launches of Private, with the rocket reaching up to 18,000 meters. After the success of the Private rocket, Kármán and his group would officially change their name from the Guggenheim Aeronautical Laboratory to the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, and the Army would provide further funding for a ballistic missile program. World War II would officially end in 1945, however rocket research would continue. Soon after the war, hundreds of German scientists who worked on the V-2 program would migrate to the United States in what would soon be called Operation Paperclip. Chief among them would be Nazi rocket scientist Werner von Braun, a hugely controversial figure who would later become a leading figure in the race to the moon.